you feel good about pushing him as far as you're pushing today, or do you think you let the match get away? I think I let the match get away. Uh, I mean, you know, he's obviously got to where he is because of been in that situation so many times. But I mean, that being said, you know, I think I've served our matches before and uh, it's just disappointing for me right now uh, when I reflect on the match. But obviously, yeah, you know, did well to get there. Get there. Your first set, you were overpowered. What, what was going on there? Um, well, I think he was definitely more than overpowering. He was just definitely a little rusty. And I think uh, he's missing more balls than he's used to. And uh, I think that's just how the first set went. I played, I played smart. And, uh, Ball deep and he was just missing a little bit more than uh, I thought he would and uh, he had a very good second set. I didn't, I didn't uh, play great but once again, uh, the third set I had no chances. You know, you had you on the ropes and you fought back into the tiebreaker. That has to feel good. Yeah, I mean, I think I did a good job in certain areas. I feel like uh, he was he was up to break on me a couple times there and I fought back and you know, I just gave myself a chance to, um, you know, I was definitely out and I gave myself a chance to come back and win the match, and uh, when I when I didn't do that, it was a little disappointing. Not not at the time, but now, obviously, at the time, I was just trying to find a way to uh, you know win the match and focus on that. So uh, obviously, uh, a little disappointed now, but we'll get over it and try to get better. You had to be real confident after that first set. Did you think it was well? Okay, this is it'll be easy. Well, no, it wasn't exactly like that. He was he was missing a lot. Uh, like I said earlier, it was definitely rusty. He hasn't played a match in a while, and it showed. And mm -hmm. even guys like Clayton, I mean, they had the great champions and everything, but sometimes uh, they need a couple matches to get back to where they were. And I, like I said, I think I took advantage of that. I think I did a good job doing that, but you know, I should have uh, put a little more pressure on him in the second and you know, maybe early on in the third. Did you ever find yourself at a point thinking, that's late, do it across the net, and then I'm not supposed to beat him? That is, do you fight that against a guy like him? Not, not really, though. I mean, the only time was probably the first couple of points in the match, and once I once I got got, got a hold and uh, once I got my feet wet, I feel like I was I was fine. I didn't really think about who I was playing anymore, and uh, I was just thinking about what he was going to do, his tendencies, and what I was supposed to do out there. And it didn't really affect me that you know it was you. Know, so. Have you played uh, any other number one? I played Carlos Moya a couple of years ago. And, uh, last year. Uh, DJ and his brothers were very, very popular at this club back in the 1970s. They came to all the tournaments. Uh, were those guys an inspiration at all to you? I know you're so much younger than they are that you would never have seen them play, I'm sure. At least, and they're certainly not in their prime, but did they have, have they been supportive of you in any way? Is there any connection? Well, the Amitraj family uh, was obviously a great, had a very good influence on Indian tennis overall. I feel like, you know, they popularized the sport a lot. And, and they're still, still very connected in many ways. And I, I spent quite a, a couple of years in their academy in Chennai. And so I saw them from time to time, but not not, not all the time. But they were always supported. The Krishnans were as well. And even right now, we have the Andrew Mahesh, who uh, uh, luckily for me, um, they've been very supportive of me. And they've always followed my career and helped me. So then they created an environment that allowed you to have the career you've had? Uh, well, yes and no. I don't think I wouldn't give all the credit to them, I think. A lot of credit has to go to my coaches and people well, right. that put the yeah, groundwork yeah, well, in. But, yeah. but I think you know, as far as popularizing the sport in, in the country, I think that's what that's where they did a good job. Which so I noticed that you were totally running and getting to absolutely every ball, grinding out each point. I know you're known to be a great grinder and all of that. But do you do any other fitness to help you be so quick on your feet? Um, I play a lot of different sports. When I was a kid, I played every sport possible. I played soccer, cricket, I played football, basketball, and uh, I obviously work a lot of my fitness as well. Uh, when I was in college, I enjoyed playing you know, all the other rec leagues and everything. And uh, I travel with a guy that really takes care of my body, makes sure that I'm healthy, fit every time I get on the court. So I think that, that gives me an advantage when I'm, when I'm out there. And I think fitness is one of my strengths and movement is one of my strengths as well. And, Hopefully, it gets stronger and stronger. Time. Are we allowed to claim you as a Texan? We don't have a lot of Texas pros. Is that okay? Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can you can claim me as whatever. Some people from Virginia might get a little upset. It's something I spent. Uh, but you know, Virginia and Texas have always had some friendly battles. You guys can have another one. Can you, can you talk about what what brought you to Texas? Well, I spent the last two off seasons in Austin, and uh, I was uh, I had the privilege of working uh, some with Andy Roddick and. 
uh, I think it was just a great opportunity for me coming out of college in about six months and having the opportunity to hit with someone as good as Andy and just being around him and seeing what it takes to, to be there consistently. I think he's been very kind to me. So it was, it was but it wasn't a case of Andy saying, come on down. I mean, you, you would come. No, he wasn't, he wasn't ever forcing me. And nothing, there was nothing like that. Another big reason, of, of course, is the coach uh, I work with currently. His uh, name is Scott McCain, and he lives out in Austin. So it just, it just made, it just made sense for me to, you know, it's, it's a short career. You look at it, and it's kind of like work. So I'm moving to Austin for work. But that being said, I really like the city as well, and I like Texas so far. Everything's big. There's a lot of space, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool place. Where, where do you, where do you and Andy get his place? Wherever he wants to. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really, I'm not really pushy when it comes to that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky I have the opportunity, but wherever he wants to head. How, how often? Oh, we did off seasons, obviously, but we're, we're obviously on different schedules for yeah. whatever reason. The second week of Wimbledon, I'm watching. So it's, a, it's, it's kind of a slightly different schedule. Hopefully, I'll get up there someday. You already had a, you already had a friendship and a hitting relationship with him before, before last year's Wimbledon? I did. So were you, did you, were you watching the Wimbledon final? Absolutely, yeah. Were you, were you obviously were pulling for him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, no doubt, yeah. So, son, son what, what's the rest of spring got for you? Where, what are you looking for next? I'm going to uh, Johannesburg soon, I guess. I haven't bought my ticket yet, but it's next week, so i got to hurry up there. And play a few more challenges. I'm, I'm ranked about 120-ish right now, so I need to work on you know, being more consistent and getting some better results so I can get, uh, get my ranking to the top 100, maybe in the top 80, and so I can start playing a few more tour events. That's obviously the eventual goal. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to play a few challenges in South Africa, one and a couple in Europe before I start playing on clay again and get ready for the French and Mobile. Some people could draw the conclusion that since you started hitting Andy, his career has surged again. Is that a coincidence? Uh, no, absolutely not. I think it's um, credit has to go to me. I do everything. I mean, <laughs> and he's been playing well because of me. No, 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 of course not. I mean, uh, he's Sorry, you're on the record. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, of course not. He's, uh, you know, the kind of work that he puts in and the kind of work his team puts in is just it's amazing to watch and be around. And uh, I don't know if I'm even a part of it in a small way or not. I don't, I don't definitely don't think I am, but I think, I think it's just, just the work that he puts in is, is, is why he gets the results that he does. You can get. say without uh, without any equivocation though that he is he's one giving you a, a model to follow and he's hitting with him has made you a better. Absolutely. No 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 question.